Hey, I want to share with you a new little shop toy. We have is a two axis adjustable table with a, I think six or 800 X electronic microscope and LED lighting on top of it. And we're going to take a look at some plain irons and edges should be interesting. Here's that same setup from above. So now let's take a look at what the camera sees. This is a Sigley STS iron. This one was manufactured um, probably in the 1920s, long after Stanley had acquired Sigley Tool Company. Uh, I know that because this is a keyhole down iron and Sigley made keyhole up irons. Stanley produced a keyhole down pattern as they ran out of Sigley irons while they are continuing the production of Sigley. Uh, so this is a thick tapered laminated iron. This is the back of the iron. It has been polished on a 12,000 grit water stone. It is a mirror finish on the cutting edge on both sides. Um, this blade has not been put to use. It's been honed and set aside. It's a backup blade. So let's take a look. So that scratch pattern that you see is really imperceptible to the naked eye. It looks like a, a mirror finish. You don't see any scratches at all. So for perspective, let's see if we can do this. Give you an idea of the resolution of what you're looking at. We'll scroll across here. Transit, I suppose, maybe the more appropriate word. Okay, and coming into the image about now, right here, Okay, you see that? That is a human hair. So you can see that those scribe lines, scratches on the back of the cutting iron are maybe one tenth the thickness of a human hair. That gives you some idea of the magnification level we're looking at. And truly the cutting edge of the iron is relatively true. There are a few imperfections and there's definitely some imperfections and material embedded in the cutting iron itself. You can see some of that. And there's a few little nicks right there, probably where there was crystalline material embedded in the steel that broke away from the matrix as the iron was honed. So let's take a look at the cutting surface. Okay, we're looking at the bevel on this cutter. It has a secondary bevel that's one degree. Again, mirrored finish, 12,000 grit, Japanese water stone. And uh, to the right at an angle is human hair. So again, you can see the scale that we're looking at on this iron. And you can see a little bit of pitting there. There are imperfections in the crystalline structure. We're going to focus right down on the cutting edge. And let's see what we see. So again, you see the scratch pattern that is now parallel to the length of the cutting iron. The back of the iron was polished going um, perpendicular to the length of the cutting iron. Obviously, um, this was honed in parallel. So the scratch pattern is in the opposite direction. And those scratches are invisible to the human eye. You were looking at a mirrored finish. There's a nice view of a piece of um, uh, foreign body embedded in the matrix of the steel. You can see a few of them there. There's one that was near the edge and looks like the edge gave way under the sharpening process with that imperfection right there. None of this matters when you're planing wood. The wood does not see this um, level of magnification in a sense. Um, the wood fibers are you know, so much thicker. But it is interesting to know what your cutting edge looks like. It's interesting that a mere finish piece of steel is anything but smooth. So again, the cutting edge relatively straight and free of um, fractures. 
which surprises me. I would have expected to see a little more of a jagged edge at this level of magnification. There's some more imperfections, material embedded, it's like a piece of carbon embedded in the steel. And I'm gonna show you one other really interesting piece on this laminated. All right, again, for perspective, diagonally, that's a human hair and a shadow cast by the human hair. So what you see diagonally is twice the thickness of the human hair. You can make out the um, terminator between the shadow and the hair itself. In the background, as I transit and move that out of the way, this is the point of fusion of the two different types of steel in the lamination. Tool steel on the bottom, that provides the cutting edge and a um, lesser quality steel that provides the thickness of the iron that's forge welded to the cutter. That's the way a laminated iron was made. And that's the joint, which is surprisingly porous. You see little points at which it's welded together, but you see mostly a bunch of voids in a really regular pattern. Some metallurgists can tell us what that means. Uh, it's beyond me, but it is really interesting because you cannot make this out with the human eye, but you do see a line on the bevel of the plane that delineates between the tool steel and the laminated steel. So that line is really a series of voids that we're seeing. It changes the light reflection. So pretty interesting stuff. I hope you found it interesting.